In this example of the flexural response of a beam to loads, we're going to focus on the qualitative um, deflected shape that's consistent with the moment diagram. Right, so we have what amounts to being a diving board here with a pin support at the right, roller at uh, the left, and then a free end overhanging diving board part over here at the very far left. Now the set of loads that are applied are exceptionally complicated. Um, in terms of, wow, we got one, two, three, four externally applied sets of loads. And then, of course, we have the external reactions that, as far as the beam is concerned, is yet two more uh, sets of loads. The shear diagram comes, follows then along with the various aspects that we've got here. And then the moment diagram then actually smooths out things quite a bit. And that's going to be, remember, a pretty important element of trying to match what we've got going on here. We need to meet the moment curvature relationships, boundary conditions, and special conditions. Well, we don't have any hinges or other releases, so this particular example doesn't have any special conditions. We only have moment curvature and boundary conditions to deal with. And remember here, the roller prevents any displacement. Transverse displacement in C has to be equal to zero. Likewise, the transverse displacement here at the other support at F has to be equal to zero. Now, the rotation at F is not going to be equal to zero. We'd be very surprised if it did because, of course, that pin support allows free rotation. Now, the continuity condition we end up with here is that the rotation just to the left of C has to equal the rotation to the right because there's not a special hinge. It's just a roller that prevents vertical or transverse movement, but it doesn't do anything to prevent rotation. So the beam still needs to be nice and smooth there. We definitely have some sort of displacement at A, and we'd have some rotation at A. We don't know what those are, um, so we won't worry about that part. Right, so let's go now and, and take another closer look at how, what this qualitative deflected shape might end up looking like. Right Now we're not trying to get scale here, we're only just trying to get what the, um, the relative or qualitative view of point of this is. Right, so right at this big ne negative moment, that was where we had our roller support. So let's put that in there. At the far right, we have our pin support, and let's get that in there. Right now, when I look at this, I say, okay, what do we have from a moment curvature standpoint? I've got positive moment here to the right, and that's going to mean some form of smiley face in the deflected shape. Whereas over here on the left, we have mostly negative, not mostly, it's all negative moment, and we'll have, therefore, a frowny face kind of curvature. Now somehow we have to get the all this to work in there just right. As in, we got to get the moment curvature, and we have to have the boundary conditions work out right. Where it's, the structure is allowed to move, displace, then we need to allow it to, and where it's not allowed to, then we need to not allow it. It's as simple as that, right? So we've got this transition between one set of curvature, concave up versus concave down. That will be our inflection point. We haven't calculated exactly where that's at, but qualitatively from the deflected shape, we can see that it's just to the right of D someplace. So that's an important kind of thing to go ahead and kind of indicate roughly where that's going to be located. Now, that just says a transition between curvature. It does not say that we um, have zero displacement. I mean, shoot, gee, look, if we were standing right here with this load at D, wouldn't you think that this would probably go, be going down a little bit? And probably so. It's going to move, that's for sure. So let's go back down here then. We get our French curve out. And there's a little bit of trial and error to learn how to do these. Right? We're going to have a nice, smooth kind of thing going on. Now, if I put smiley face in here, I'm going to have problems because I'll never be able to get over to this side because that side has frowny face in it. Huh. All right. So we got to fiddle and fuss around a little bit to try to figure out, well, what might be a convenient way to show these deflected shapes? Now, the rotation at C is not guaranteed to be zero. I'd like to not try to imply that it is. Now, I'm having a hard time because I don't know what really happens to the tip at A. And so we've got a lot of loads in here that do counteracting kinds of things. The concentrated 10 kips tries to push down A, whereas the couple at B wants to rotate that in the other direction. 
I'm going to guess that maybe we actually have A kind of move up a little bit. I don't know. Well, let's propose something and then come back and see if we're, we have something that, that makes sense with the overall requirements. So now i got this frowny face. Notice what I've done in here. I have made sure that I have zero displacement at the roller because I can't have any. I've got frowny face concave down everywhere there's negative moment all the way up to the inflection point. I made sure I had a little bit of rotation at that support. And now I come along and I find a nice smooth way to get our smiley face, which is what we got here, the concave up portion of the deflected shape in. And that's not too bad. I'd like this to be a little bit better. These, th this is just an inflection point transition from negative to positive curvature but there's no hinge or anything that would break the slope there. We really would like that to be smoother as an overall. So we could probably kind of, it would be nice if I had done this in pencil so I could erase it and try again. We could probably make the line a little bit thicker through there. That looks a little bit better, a little bit smoother. That second one is just slightly a little bit better. Right. Now, if it's difficult to draw, it's probably difficult for the beam to really respond quite the way we've done. This is not a bad initial guess. Notice again the keys. We've got concave up where we have positive bending moment. We have concave down where we have negative bending moment. We've complied with the uh, displacement boundary conditions. And we've allowed the free end to move and to rotate. There's not a lot of rotation there, but there's a little bit, a tiny bit that shows that that theta at A is not equal to zero, just like that displacement, transverse displacement at A is also not equal to zero. So that's that's a good thing. So we're complying with everything that we need. I just would have preferred to have done this little segment over here to the right just a little bit better, but I wanted to show you how you get started with these things and then you can always come back and kind of clean them up and make them a little bit smoother after you give it a go the first time.